welcome to Mad Time to Buy Amarillo Part 2. Um, it's beginning of January and uh, you may have seen the video where I just got this big guy through the post and we have put him in water. Watch him with interest, see how he does. But I also ordered a box of six Amaryllis. Now, this is from Gardener's Express. It is Gar Gardening Express. Um, and they have a website. And I have ordered from them before. I ordered a, 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 an Acer. And I did a lot of research into what Acer would look gorgeous in the autumn. And so I bought it and I planted it. And all was going well. And then it just died. So when I contacted the company, they were not hugely helpful. And they wanted me to dig the whole thing up and send it back to them at great expense. So I just said, no, so that I'll not use your company again, sort of thing. But as it happened, um, they had what I thought was a really good offer on Amaryllis. Six Amaryllis. You don't get to know the varieties. It's just a complete punt, complete guess. And um, they arrive and bought them up, and they're in twenty pounds, nineteen something, and you pay postage as well. But I was so impressed with the first lot I got that here's one of them over here. Actually, this is the only one not to really be. There's, you can see a little bit of growth in the top there, but not much. But it's it's just coming. It's just coming. There's lots of other ones that are. So I just put Amaryllis Gardener's Express Mix. Because I don't know what it's going to be, which I find quite exciting. So even though I don't need any more Amaryllis, I decided to buy another box. So I thought I'd unbox it with you guys so you can see what you get. Um, and see what you think. Now, obviously, it's easy enough to go in and buy a named variety that you've been eyeing up or that you like the look of. But there's always something quite enjoyable in buying a mystery box. <laughs> right, here's one that I did buy. I'd forgotten about that, actually. I did buy a named variety of it. Amarilla's Clown. So I shall keep this. Hang it well, move it right here so you can see me open it up. It doesn't feel like an enormous bowl. It looks good. Yeah, we'll wake that bad boy up, no bother. Um what I do with each bulb when I get it is clean it up. Maybe trim off some roots. And uh, then we're going to do the thing. Well, I normally put them in water, but I normally put them in water for maybe an hour at the most just to wake them up a bit. And to be honest, the results I've seen of that have been really good. Um, they're the bulbs that wake up first. And... Uh, Almost, almost immediate in some cases. So we've got some big scabies there, but I'll go back to that and clean it up in a wee bit. Let's see our mystery package. So, whoop, amaryllis assortment. And first bulb. So not enormous. But I suppose for that price, you're not expecting enormous good roots. No action yet. Come. Bulb number two. About the same size. Just a wee bit. Yeah, not quite as firm. I think maybe sometimes when the outside layers are getting ready to go all crinkly, um, it feels softer than it would be. There's a, yeah, yeah, a little bit of baby action there. 
stuff. I don't need to put these in a specific place because I don't know what they're called. I don't know what they are. Number three. Again, good roots. A little bit of a mark there, but nothing big. Lovely. Four, smallest, I would say. But it's fine for your money. Oops. Five. And six. And that's the mold. Now you can see if you're looking for size, this is the jumbo one I bought for eight, about 18 pounds. I can't even lift it up. And that's that one. Spare difference, isn't it? But with any luck, a bit of love and care, these guys will grow up to be as big and impressive as that one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean them up a bit and take off the outer layers of the skin now i know i always say this people you know a lot of people won't believe in doing that which is absolutely fine i do it because a lot of my old amaryllis got mealy bug infestations so the only way to get rid of them was to take it off things can be lurking behind here so I take it off. I also think it makes the bulb look much better. So I'm going to clean them all up and I'll speed it up for you so you don't need to watch it all at the speed. And then we'll pop them in some water. And then I think I might leave them in the water overnight and pop them up with you tomorrow. And that'll give them a good chance to soak up some tepid water. Well, room temperature kind of tepid water. And we shall look at it from there. I'll have to remember the clown one is different and it should be kept apart from the others. I'll see you in a wee minute. <laughs> there we're back and um, that was a bigger job than I expected uh, I think maybe buying them as late on as this in the season kind of showed there a little bit they've always obviously been kept in the bags for quite a wee while and some a couple of them had a bit of mold on them that's why I took off quite a lot of the outside um, and one of them had a soft spot but the bulb was firm and um, I think exposing it from underneath the layers of skin to the outdoors might help it dry off but the, you know I'm pretty happy with the bulbs now and um, they are as I say all firm looking much better uh, my clown one which was reduced I think it was down to 3.99 was by far the worst. It had quite a bit of mould on it and uh, you can even probably still see the mould a little bit in the top section even though I cut it off a bit. But the bulb's firm um, and uh, all cleaned up. I'm hoping it will go on to do great things. And these guys, I'll just top up their water a little bit. There. And they will sit in that overnight. No, balance them up slightly. A couple of the bulbs have babies, which is exciting. And we'll watch them grow. Little baby bulblets. There we are. So I just don't want the body of the bulb to be in the water too much too, because that can start rot as well. But hopefully they'll get rehydrated and then tomorrow morning we can pot them together. I've got some lovely pots. 
that I've been buying um, at TK Maxx. And these, that's the bigger size. This one's 6 .99, and you get them in lots of different colours and they've got the attached um, saucer, which is really good because the water can overflow into the saucer and you can pour it away because there's a little hole there. But you don't have, you don't lose the saucer, it doesn't fall off or anything like that. They're super and they're really attractive colours, I think. So that's a bigger one at 6 .99 for your larger bulb. And then I bought quite a few of the smaller version, which is only four ninety nine, and they're very pretty as well. Again, you've got your saucer attached. There's a white one, and a sort of white one with a wavy bit. Uh, and I bought this one as well. That one of my little rescue orchids was sitting in just now, and that was reduced again because it's got a chip in the quite a big chip in the front there. But I think that would look nice with one of my smaller amaryllis in it. Uh, yeah, we'll leave them overnight, have a wee soak, and then we'll pop them up tomorrow. And I think the size of pot would be quite good for most of them because the amaryllis like to be quite root bound. You want room for their roots to grow, but you don't want them to have too much room because they'll just sort of swim about get lost <laughs> uh, and also last year funnily enough when I was unpotting I'd left my amaryllis in the garage for a month and uh, when all the leaves had died I took them out and unpotted them all and um, cut off all the leaves and now they're back in the garage for, till the end of the month in a brown paper bag and I did notice with those ones that the roots were much better in plastic pots than in um, ceramic pots or in not glazed pots but in uh, terracotta pots they seem to have a limited root growth in the terracotta ones but really quite extensive in the plastic ones and I think maybe that's you know to do with them retaining more water which is good but We've got a mixture of pots to go on this year, so we'll see what's what. And uh, as I say, these guys will sit here overnight in the water and be ready for potting first thing tomorrow. We'll see you then. Bye-bye. Hello, folks. <laughs> right, it's now the next day and we're ready to pot up our amaryllis. And I think I've gathered everything that I need here um, to show you. So... I just use a tub to put all my compost in because I mix it up a little bit. I use any, I'm not really fussy about what kind of houseplant compost I use, any will do, but a houseplant compost, which would do fine by itself. I just like to add a few extra bits to it. So I'm going to pour plenty of this into my plastic tub because I've got a few plants to plant today. Worm castings. This is very nutritional for bulbs and even though they don't require food in the beginning because all the energy they need is in the bulb, uh, it's afterwards when they're photosynthesizing. They've thrown up all those lovely leaves. That's when they need to be fed. So they can get all the energy back in the bulb, make it bigger, make it stronger for next year. And I also add a bit of perlite. Perlite's great when you don't want a plant to get waterlogged. It creates those little pockets within the structure of the compost that allow it uh, to drain well. So add some perlite. gone everywhere there we go <laughs> and I think I've also got a little bit of charcoal to add down here this also helps with drainage and it also helps keep any water that's in your pot from getting stagnant and smelly got my gloves 
So I'm going to mix it all up, mix it all up together, and then choose my first container to plant with. Here we go. Just mixing it up, all the elements, and breaking down in lumps of compost. There we go. You can tailor your mixture to whatever you think works well for you, you know. Use any elements that you like specifically or that you think you're, maybe your plant needs more drainage. Maybe it's not got a drainage hole. Use your uh, charcoal to stop it going boosty. There we go. Or for different kinds of plants. But this is a good sort of rule of thumb for a lot of house plants. But as I say, manufactured houseplant compost should have a lot of these elements in it already. So whether you want to add anything to it or not, entirely up to you. Some people use just normal gardening, uh, multi-purpose compost for their amaryllis. Absolutely fine as well. Right, okay, so who are we going to do first? Hmm. Now, should I choose a smaller bulb? Show you the bulbs here. They're still in water. There we go. It's like I'm baking a pie, doesn't it? I might actually turf some of the water pre wet the compost. There we go. Add a little bit more. So, if you didn't see the previous video, I got these amaryllis. From a company um, that sent them to me yesterday and it's now sort of the first couple of weeks of August, first couple of weeks of January so it's quite late to get your amaryllis bulbs and these have obviously been sitting in storage for a while some of them were a wee bit moldy some of them were not soft but had soft spots but they're they're fine. I've taken cleaned them all up. And they all look good now, and ready for planting. Right, so I got this from TK Maxx, and it's lovely heavy stone planter. It's not got a hole in the bottom, so no drainage there. But and it's not very big, so there's not a huge amount of growing room. But if I look for my smallest bulb. That might go okay in there actually. I think that would look quite nice. So I'll just put it to one side. As I said before, amaryllis quite like being root bound, but you want to have enough room around the outside for the actual bulb to grow and enough room in down into the pot for roots to grow. Now with this guy, when I put him inside there, he looks like he's got about half an inch all the way around and some decent depth there to grow roots. I think we'll, we'll take a try. We'll take a wee shot at that. Now, because this doesn't have any drainage, I'm going to put some orchid bark in the bottom just to provide a barrier between the actual compost and the water. You know, if water goes through and it's got nowhere to go, it'll stop beyond the actual orchid bark, creating a barrier between that and the compost. So hopefully that will allow uh, for the plant not to rot. Give it a bit more space. <laughs> this has got quite good roots on it. I think I put too much compost in just now. Make a little bit out. There we go. Right, I'm going to put this actually in here to make minimum mess. Har har. <laughs> mess everywhere. And we'll just put some compost round and about. 
there isn't a huge amount of room to manoeuvre with this pot. So it's not the easiest one to start with, but I'm hoping it looks lovely and the bulb can flourish in it. If it seems to be struggling after it's um, flowered and everything, and you want that after the flowering period's over, that's when you want the actual bulb growing and plant growing to take place so it prepares for next year, then we can pot it on into a bigger pot after that if needs be. Jostling it about, filling it in, making sure it's all nice and sturdy. It's a good heavy pot this, which is great for when we do get a flower stalk and leaves, they get a bit top heavy, so this will help anchor it down. Just keep the tie and go all the way around. And I'm sure everybody's told you, if you watch a few of these videos, everyone will tell you how to how deep to plant an amaryllis bulb. They're not like normal bulbs in that you would plant them under the soil. You sort of plant them on the soil a little bit, but because they are so top heavy, you need to actually make sure that it's anchored well underneath. So sometimes I plant it a third deep, sometimes a bit more. All depends on the bulb and on I think he might be there. And when we water this guy, we'll see. That's sort of almost sitting proud of the entire compost there. But I like it. <laughs> I think it looks pretty. Got this one down right here. I'm going to the next one. We'll use this pot next. This is one of the smaller ones. A bit of working back. Sometimes I put a bit of kitchen roll in there. Choose another small
Thank <laughs> you. 